what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where we're gonna be talking about what exactly made call of duty so popular now the reason that i'm making this video is because i was thinking lately about how much uh i guess outrage and how powerfully people have feelings about call of duty basically the the fan base of call of duty is so passionate about the game uh but at the same time they also are complaining about the game all of the time and i catch myself doing that exact same thing i mean my last video was even talking about some of the big flaws in call of duty black ops 4 and it got me thinking like it got me thinking about something that i i hear drifter saying a lot and i know this is the second video in a row that i actually am referencing his channel but he talked about how he couldn't believe how many people play call of duty despite constantly saying how much they hate it how many problems there are with it how how difficult it is to play the game in terms of like actually enjoying it how much they're not having fun with it uh he basically was talking about you know he doesn't understand why people do that and it got me thinking you know when i catch myself playing black ops 4 and i'm getting frustrated or if i'm complaining about gun balance or about anything about call of duty in general i think to myself i think why do i still play this game like why do i enjoy call of duty or why do i think i enjoy call of duty uh as much as i do and then when i get on and play it a lot of times i end up just getting frustrated about a lot of problems that have been in the franchise for a very long time you would think logically that i would just go and play something else and that thought got me thinking through a lot of different things and one of the things that came to mind was why is Call of Duty even as popular as it is if the entire community has been saying for years that there's so many problems with the game? Uh, and that got me thinking, like, what was it? What actually happened in the course of video game history that actually caused Call of Duty to be pushed to the forefront of the industry, of the gaming industry and as a whole, and be the number one best-selling first-person shooting franchise of all time. I think it's like the fourth uh, best-selling video game franchise of all time behind like Mario, Super Mario, and Pokemon or something like that. And I think that it started back in 2007 with Call of Duty 4 modern warfare now i know that call of duty 1 2 and 3 they all did their thing they were all popular um in their own right in terms of like in the actual first person shooter genre they were popular they were well known well played and well respected at the time from at least what i can remember and what i can tell um but call of duty 4 took that to a whole new level because really with call of duty 1 through 3 we played we played through world war 2 and these games came out for the uh, i think the ps2 xbox original xbox and i think maybe some of them actually came out for the gamecube as well i don't know i think call of duty maybe call of duty 1 and uh, maybe two came out for the GameCube, but regardless, um, this was kind of a point in video game history where we could, as as video game developers, could um, actually tell the story of World War II in video game format, and actually you could play as that character. And a lot of different games were doing this. I mean, Medal of Honor was a, another franchise that comes to mind that did World War II very very well. But once 2007 came around and Call of Duty jumped to modern warfare, it actually took a whole new spin and it made a lot more people interested in the game and in the franchise in general because a lot of people you know world war ii there were a lot of world war ii games that had come out i mean medal of honor uh came out back with the playstation one so that game that franchise had already been around for a while but now that we're pushing into or at the time we were pushing into modern warfare with with a new gaming console right it came out on the ps3 the xbox 360 um i think the wii even got its own version of call of duty 4 but it was different but with the ps3 and the xbox 360 we started to see what what you might consider hd gaming like the gaming looked better than it ever had before um and it was significantly better than the gaming that we were used to on the ps2 original xbox and things of that sort so i think the timing of call of duty made a big impact on its success especially with the release of call of duty 4 modern warfare um with a lot of people a lot of younger people getting interested you know young and primarily dem the demographic at least back then and still probably predominantly today is is men and young young boys basically um and you know every every boy growing up at least back then uh 
and is still to this day, I'm sure, is infatuated with with guns. You know, I mean, it starts when you're a, a kid and you learn about um, cowboys versus like Native Americans and cowboys and Indians or cops and robbers and uh, things like that. You know, with with the revolvers and the guns and everything like that. It, it's it's uh, maybe that's just an American thing, but uh, growing up, there's like toy guns and, and it's it's interesting. Um, looking back, it it actually seems a little bit absurd. It's like why do little boys like playing with toy guns? It's very odd. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with like the culture and all of the stories we hear about World War One and Two and all this other stuff. Of course, the United States is like the number one exporter of guns as well, so it's very Im embedded in the culture. But regardless, um, this caused Modern Warfare, uh, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, to be picked up by a lot of younger kids, people in middle school, high school, um, and of course college students and everything like that, um, uh, and predominantly a male demographic playing this game uh, and being able to play in HD and play against other players and play in an environment um, that actually worked pretty well. It worked, I should say, very well for the time. I mean, especially Xbox Live was a, it was an incredible experience for its time. It was just built very well. It was very uh, very streamlined. And I know, looking back, it, it doesn't feel that way because we look and we see what we have now with PlayStation Network and, and the Xbox Live that we have today, and we think back and say, oh my god, that was so glitchy with the voice chats and all this other errors and crashing, and it was a pain in the ass, and people would troll you and follow you into lobbies and jam lobbies and hacked lobbies and everything uh, but for the time it was really good and it was an experience that was relatively new to consoles because the Xbox and the PlayStation 2 did have online capabilities um, and they did work but this was the first time that it was brought to a mainstream like it, it grew like crazy with the PS3 and the Xbox 360 and Call of Duty was able to take their formula their, their successful formula that they had for the previous three games put it into a modern shooter and have an online experience that was almost like unlike any other I mean at the time uh, Halo 3 sold actually better than Call of Duty 4 in 2007 but again 2007 wasn't the peak of Call of Duty I, I'm, I think that's where it started though I think that was the the birth of that's when everybody realized that okay Call of Duty is onto something they have a formula that works really well and as it as we progressed um, and as Call of Duty as a franchise progressed it it blew up more and more and more and it started with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare strictly because of how good the online experience was with that game coupled with the fact that the modern warfare aspect was a lot more appealing to a broader audience rather than just a world war ii experience that had already been done by other franchises so that's one major thing but there's something else to it because again like i said halo 3 outsold modern warfare uh in 2007 so there were a lot of other games on the in the market i should say i mean especially Especially uh, Battlefield is another one, like Bad Company 2, that's a very good one. Battlefield 3, essentially that's EA's uh, version of Call of Duty if you really think about it. So it's not like Call of Duty was at the right place in the right time and they had no competition, because there was competition at the time. So there had to have been something else besides good timing uh, that made Call of Duty as popular as it is today. And I think a lot of that has to do with the original formula that was used in Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops. Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 2. I think that is like those four games are like the golden age of Call of Duty. Um, you might, you know, tack um, Modern uh, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, and uh, World at War in there as well. But for the most part, I would say those four games seem to be like the most cherished and uh, the the ones that people love the most. Again. COD 4 is also another one, um, some of the, like, the OGs on the scene, and, like, like I played it a ton myself, um, but the, a lot of people like those specific, those four years of Call of Duty were, like, the golden days, uh, and, and I want to talk about that because I think what made Call of Duty so good back then, uh, a lot of that is actually missing from the Call of Duties that we've been getting the past few years, including Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Now, from what I can remember, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops, and for the most part, Black Ops 4, uh, the guns in those games had a very high time or very fast time to kill. Um, pretty much any gun would melt you. Uh, there obviously were some guns that were better than other guns, especially in Black Ops 2 
is when we really started to see that there was a tier list of weapons or if not a tier list at least a couple of weapons that were the top of the line of course we're talking about the msmc and the pdw those guns were just some of the best guns in black ops 2 pretty clearly uh, amongst everything else but regardless uh, there were a lot of guns in those games they all had a uh, time to kill that was very fast um, and you know a good player was still able to pub stomp but a bad player would still be able to do sort of well just because of how powerful the guns were uh, and how you know if you played the map a certain way you could do well and that brings me to my second point and that is the map design of these games is a lot different than what we see today uh, a lot of what we see today are streamlined maps or predominantly three lane maps and I have nothing against three lane maps because I do think that they play well and they do well for the Call of Duty formula especially uh, in if we're talking about like a competitive uh, competitive scene it makes a lot of sense and plus it's kind of what Call of Duty players have come to uh, you know know and love I guess you could say but over the years it seems like the Call of Duty maps have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller uh, there's fewer rooms to go into uh, there's fewer ladders to climb and different different aspects of the map that you can access I mean if even if you look in you know game more recent Call of Duties um, there's not even many corners that you can sit in and again I know that this is because they're trying to prevent people from camping in corners and I get that um, but it's just very odd that that you actually can't do it like uh, a lot of times I would camp in a corner while I if I'm low on health and I'm regenerating or if I have to reload my weapon or if I'm sound whoring uh, I, I would sit stand there and listen to see if I hear an enemy I don't want to move and I don't want to be vulnerable so that's a good place to wait it out and see where the enemy is coming from uh, and it's just very frustrating to be playing uh, the newer maps that are a lot smaller they are a lot more streamlined where you, you there's only a you can't really go outside of of like the where the game is forcing you to go right it's kind of funneling players into certain parts of the map whereas in older call of duty games you could literally spawn in in like a corner of the map and you'd be just in the middle of like a bunch of weeds and brush or trees or something like that uh, and you'd actually have to run for a little while just to get to like the actual um the scene of where all the fighting is going on I mean, just think about Estate in Modern Warfare 2. Everybody fought most of the battles uh, in that cabin right in the top of the hill there, or they fought uh, slightly down the hill where people would snipe in the in that little uh, garage in the top window, um, or people would kind of go over near like the docks where the where the boats uh, where the boat would the rowboat is is parked, and that's primarily the the main main places that people would fight. But you still could spawn way back near like the power lines in the power generator area and you could just be around that part of the map and that's what's missing from these new call of duties there's no outside areas besides just where everybody's fighting now the maps are so small and where you spawn just pushes you into into the fight into the battle and and it's it's because they're trying to get you to to kind of get addicted almost uh to the to the fight and to the emblems that pop up on the screen and the flashing lights and the excitement of getting kills and and all this other stuff and the points that that pop up on the screen and you make it makes you feel good it makes you feel like you're doing well but to me it just makes the maps feel a little bit more uh soulless if that makes sense and a little bit more boring because there's not all these places you can go and you can't even go into corners anymore even for strategic purposes not even to camp you just can't go into corners they took corners out there's no corners and rooms anymore according to call of duty there's no such thing as a square room there's no corners in any rooms so we've talked about the timing of call of duty 4's release we've talked about the golden age of call of duty um, in in modern warfare 2 through black ops 2 and we've also talked about the guns in these games and how they all have a fast time to kill and how you never really felt like at a super disadvantage we've talked about the maps that made these games really Really, really great and how it differs from or how it differs sorry from uh, what we're playing today the past couple years of Call of Duty what we've been seeing uh, but there's another thing that I want to talk about and I think this is the the biggest thing um, and that is the killstreaks in Call of Duty um, killstreaks are 
what separated Call of Duty from things like Halo. You would actually get rewarded for doing well by being able to absolutely stomp the competition and just demolish the enemy team. Uh, and that was super, super satisfying. That was incredibly fun. Um, and that is all uh, all but gone uh, that that is no longer the Call of Duty that we know and love instead uh, we have specialists that actually just spoon feed you um, powerful abilities and things like that and they're nowhere near as cool or as fun as the kill streaks that we saw in those golden age of Call of Duty days and if you think back those four years Modern Warfare 2 through Black Ops 2, those four years were the years that we had the best kill streaks in Call of Duty history. I mean, by far, those games had the most memorable and the most exciting, the most badass, the most powerful kill streaks out of any Call of Duty. And might I add, those were the four best years of Call of Duty's life. Those four years were the, the years where Call of Duty sold the most copies. Modern Warfare 3 is the best selling Call of Duty to date. And I think there's a big correlation there. I think, you know, of course, as time goes on, the interest in the first person shooter genre goes down, especially with a franchise as old as Call of Duty. They've kind of, you know, they're trying to change it up and keep it interesting, uh, but there's only so much you can do to keep players interested in the same formula so with that being said that 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 aside um i think the kill streaks had a they played a massive part in call of duty success in those golden years of call of duty and that's what puzzles me so much as to why they're missing from these new call of duty games because you know in those games right like the past few call of duties uav and counter uav are some of the best kill streaks that you can run strictly because of the kill streaks that actually do damage are either way too hard to get or they're not good at all or what's worse is both they're very difficult to get and when you do get them they don't reward you very much for actually getting them uh, and what's very very interesting about that is if you look back to things like modern warfare 2 running the uav made absolutely no sense i mean nobody did it nobody would run the uav because you could just run a predator missile and the predator missile in modern warfare 2 took five kills to get or four with hardline in Call of Duty Black Ops 4, getting five kills doesn't even get you a UAV. So what sounds more rewarding and more fun to you? Getting five kills and being rewarded with a self-guided missile that you could get a triple kill, quadruple kill with, or having to work towards six kills or five kills and objective points just to get a UAV that lasts about 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, not even. It's a huge difference on top of the fact that kill streaks would stack back in the day. Uh, and again, I'm talking about Modern Warfare 2, where if you got a Predator missile for four kills with Hardline and it got you a double kill, you now had a Harrier Strike that is more powerful and better than the attack helicopter in Black Ops 4 by far may i add like it is far better than the attack helicopter in black ops 4 and it's half the amount of kills to get that i mean just think about that think about how much more fun call of duty was when you had these kill streaks that allowed you to rain down on your enemies bullets and explosions and all these other things and, and don't even get me started about the chopper gunner from modern warfare 2 or black ops 1 talking about the ac-130 or the reaper from modern warfare 3 or the lodestar from black ops 2 or the dogs or talking about the the swarm kill streak from black ops 2 i mean these are the best kill streaks in call of duty history think about how incredible it was to actually obtain them and use them and do well with them uh and and that definitely had something to do with the success of call of duty and why call of duty has grown so big and why it, it cultivated such a massive fan base and now we're left with a game that has smaller streamlined maps a lot fewer guns guns that aren't as fun to use no good kill streaks at all and the ones that are semi good are way too hard to get and instead we're just kind of stuck using a couple of guns that don't have very high time to kill but they're the best in the game so you're kind of forced to use them 
and then we're spoon fed these specialist uh, abilities that you get a couple of times a game once or twice every game uh, and they're okay and they definitely help a little bit but they're given to every player so it's not like you worked for it it's not like you earned it it's just something that you get to do now it's a gimmick and it's like okay well now I it's basically the, what, what's my free kill gonna be like who am I gonna use this on who am I gonna where am I gonna drop this mesh mine to get a free kill it, it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel rewarding it doesn't feel like you actually earned it um, and and that's the big problem it's just every player gets it it's kind of like a baseball tournament for a bunch of kids where everyone gets a trophy regardless it doesn't matter how well you did and and that kind of takes the value away from the people who actually earned it the people who actually did well the people who actually win and get good at the game uh, and that is why I think um, Call of Duty got so popular and why the community has been unsatisfied with Call of Duty for many years now I mean I can think back Call of Duty Ghosts is really when uh, Call of Duty started to take that decline I mean looking back now Call of Duty Ghosts is way better than what we've been playing lately uh, but that's kind of where things started to get stale and they started to do drastic things to change up the, the game and the formula uh, and and since then things have never been the same we've never seen a Call of Duty like the golden days and I think that is where Call of Duty has been making the biggest mistake uh, with their game they haven't been emulating the success of their franchise and again I understand that they are trying to move forward and trying to improve and change things up to keep people interested and keep investors happy um, but there are some things that just made Call of Duty what it was uh, and, and, I, and it's difficult to put your finger on it exactly because it's hard to look back without thinking of just nostalgia, right? Nostalgia always feels good. It's one of the most powerful uh, feelings or emotions that you can feel. And looking back, you know, you're only going to think of the good times. Um, so it's difficult to say exactly why those games were so much better and so much more satisfying. But if I'm really am trying, if I'm trying to be critical and I'm really trying to think of specific things, uh, these are the things that I that come to mind as to why Call of Duty got so popular, why so many people are so passionate about it and why so many people loved the game in the past and really hate where it's at now and again that comes down to the time period that Call of Duty came out in in our lives you know growing up as kids it's obviously gonna be nostalgic uh, mixed with the fact that it was it was doing kill streaks right it was making time to kill fun fast and rewarding the guns were cool the guns were fun and good to use and we had interesting big maps that we could explore and there were power points and it wasn't just three lanes that everyone is squished down and forced down and and spawned on top of one another uh, and those things I think it, it's it's more of the chemistry with all of them combined it, it makes the it makes the experience way different than the Call of Duties that we've been playing lately despite it feeling like Call of Duty like the past couple of Call of Duties they do feel like it obviously it's the same mechanics and the same engine and everything like that um, but but there's there's something missing there's a big piece of Call of Duty missing from these last few games uh, and all I can think of is is the combination of what I've discussed in this video so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video um, I know this video is a bit different than some of the more recent videos that I've been doing with like best guns and how to level up fast and things like that um, but my channel was primarily founded on commentaries and the commentary genre is pretty much dead uh, ever honestly it had a bit of a resurgence when leafy the leafy was here uh, blew up in 2016 I believe um, but since he disappeared and since YouTube cracked down on um, on a lot of different things like you know the cursing and graphic stuff and, and everything politics and racials there's all sorts of stuff YouTube is incredibly politically correct now um, and the commentary genre is basically dead and it, it's a bummer because that's what I like to make and that's what I like to do I like to talk about stuff um, and I don't think they get many views because no one's searching for them because what are you gonna search for uh, so I figured that this topic was kind of in the middle where I'm able to reminisce about Call of Duty and look back uh, but also talk about seriously what makes Call of Duty so different today and why it's not as good uh, for most players and I say that strongly most I would say most players uh, think Call of Duty was better back in the day um, so again hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you smack a thumbs up that way I know to continue to actually actually make videos like this if you've made it all the way to the end of this video drop a thumbs up emoji in the comment section below that way I know you watched the whole thing because this is 
very long. I didn't mean for it to be this long, but if you did, you're a real, you're a real fan. That's what you are. Also, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click that bell button. Smack that bell button, boy. That way you know the next time that I upload, you'll get a notification and uh, it'll help me out a lot, especially because I feel like uh, YouTube doesn't, it, the sub boxes have been crazy the past like couple of weeks. I've had videos that get thousands of views and then I get I have videos that get absolutely no views. So it, it's all over the place. So uh, click that bell so that way you know the next time I upload. And um, that, and I want to know in, in the comments, along with your thumbs up emoji, tell me what your favorite Call of Duty is. Why do you agree with anything that I've said? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. And that's about it, guys. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.